So a while ago, Fine Fine sent me the K683A condenser USB microphone, and I have to admit, it was the best microphone that I have seen at that budget. It was around about the sort of 40 to $50 budget, and out of the box, it performed incredibly. Check out this video if you want to check out the sound quality of that lower end microphone so when they came to me and said to me look we've got this other more high-end microphone which is a usb dynamic microphone i was really interested to see how it performs i have to be really really clear here this is not a sponsored video and i only will do product reviews like this if i can give it both barrels that basically means I can say what I want about it, and that is written into the deal. So I can say anything I want, good, bad, and ugly. You will get my honest opinion on this microphone. But it is but it is a much more high-end microphone in terms of its price point, and I'm hoping that it's got the standard to match as well. This comes in at around about $125, and as you can see, it looks very much like the Shure SM7B, which is an XLR microphone. So, first of all, check out the Gleam link below, because I will be giving this microphone a way within the next one week to one lucky viewer also within the video i'm going to be covering information about the differences between an xlr microphone and also a usb microphone so you as the streamer can make the right choice for you your budgets and what it is that you want to have we will also be comparing the shure sm7b which i like so much that i've got two of them with the k658 from fine fine let's see how the two compare if you enjoy the video hit the like button Feel free to subscribe to the channel. Let's go. First up, a quick thanks to Owned.TV, who are my partners and are sponsoring this video. Please show Owned.TV some love. You may not know, but on Owned.TV, you can make sub emotes, sub badges. There's an avatar maker. You can even make trailers and gaming logos for your channel, as well as all of the usual stuff that you can get from Owned.TV, like stream overlays and designs. And the best part is, if you use code machine at checkout, then you get 50% off your order. Check out TV and let me know what you guys think. So here we are with the Fine Fine K658 microphone for recording, streaming, podcasting, and gaming. You'll see it's USB. It's got a mute button on it. It's got a gain control around the outside. First thing you notice here is the shock mount, and it's got a label on. The reason why they have the label to say this roundup is because the RGB bounces off that back panel there. Sort of aesthetic thing, really. Now, the Fine Fine itself is quite a nice size, and we'll do a comparison with the Shure SM7B. The gain control is here, nice and big. It doesn't feel too cheap. The button on top you can't actually feel the button on top being pressed so it's like touch sensitive when it's turned on and you see the light indicator instead of actually feeling that click we've got a usb to usb c here but the usb c itself goes into the back of the microphone most of the fine fine microphones do come with a tripod stand which is really nice made out of metal really heavyweight and durable Nonetheless, here we go. You can see how quick and easy it is to fit it to the tripod. We're fitting here the shock mount to the tripod that comes with it. We'll take the sticker off and we'll affix the Fine Fine microphone to the shock mount. Fitting the Fine Fine K658 to the shock mount is quite easy. Just takes a minute or two. There's like a separate back screw socket that just goes on the back of it and you can then fit it to the shock mount. It's only a small thing, but that screw is actually a metal screw. And that might not seem like a big deal, but I've had things like this, a plastic screw ons like that you screw them too hard they tend to just sheath and break and tear and become unusable so it's really nice that they've added like a metal screw on to the fine find there So now let's talk a little bit about the differences between an XLR microphone and a USB microphone. There are some really big differences. So if you're considering one or the other, you probably find this next bit really, really useful. And if you're waiting for the sound test, you could, if you want, skip forward and just try that out if you want to. But the way that I'm going to do this is talk about the XLR microphone into the XLR microphone. And then later, I'm going to talk about the USB microphone and I'm going to talk about that into the USB microphone. So guess what? We've already killed two birds with one stone 
slid out of a duck. I'm not very good with sayings, okay? So what is the difference between a USB and an XLR microphone? I'm talking into the Shure SM7B right now. It's an XLR microphone. It does not contain all the components needed to convert it into a digital signal with inside the microphone. You first have to plug in the XLR microphone into the three pin XLR inputs. And this is an analog signal that will go into some sort of digital interface or audio interface. I've got here the Scarlett Focusrite 1A I8. And this basically allows me to plug in a number of different XLR inputs into here. Hopefully you can see that here. So this particular one would allow me to input four different XLR inputs. And they don't just have to be microphones. They could easily be guitars or anything else that uses a three pin XLR input. This is where the preamp is contained. And this is where the analog signal is converted to a digital signal from the XLR microphone. The first biggest difference is you're separating the components a little bit when you're using an XLR microphone. That's good and bad. It's good because it means you can get a lot more high-end equipment and a lot more flexibility. For example, being able to plug in loads of different microphones into one single audio interface but it's bad because it can get quite expensive and also this takes a lot more room up on your desk than just this thing hanging off a boom arm. That being said, I've been using the Scarlett 1A i8 for a long, long time now on my podcast. Link in the description below if you want to check the podcast out. When we talk about the USB microphone here, all of those components are housed inside of the microphone itself and it outputs a digital signal that connects directly to your computer. Whereas with the XLR microphone, it's going to connect via analog to an audio interface like this and then from this into your computer once it's done its little magic key processy thing from analog to digital. So let's talk a little bit about price point for a second here. USB microphones are the budget option here, partly because everything's housed into one and they tend to use cheaper parts, but partly because also they're significantly more easier to use and more popular. So a USB microphone can range from $20 all the way up to probably the most expensive ones are three and $400, whereas an XLR microphone can tend to be used in professional sound recording, voice recording environments, and therefore the price of these can range up to like $5,000 or something. The Shure SM7B itself, I think I paid around about $400 for, and the Fine Fine K658 is around about $110, $120. So that's a significant difference between the two. So when we're doing the sound test in a second, just bear that in mind when you're thinking about the differences between the two. If there's a slight quality drop on the Fine Fine versus the Shure SM7B, think about also paying three times the price for that extra privilege. I've not done the test, I've not listened to it yet, so I'm hopefully going to be surprised by the results but I suspect for a much more expensive microphone that this will perform a lot better in terms of its out-of-the-box quality. Now I will know I have fine-tuned the Shure SM7B so you're not going to get just the perfect out-of-box version of the Shure SM7B. I've done a little bit of EQ to amend that but not so much. I've only used the GoXLR software for that whereas when you listen to the Fine Fine you will not have that same EQ. It will literally be out of the box. It will literally be the worst that you'll get. You'll be able to improve that with a little bit of EQ. Another good thing about an XLR microphone, particularly because you're using it with an audio interface, is that you can use multiple microphones without getting feedback. I literally plugged in two Shure SM7Bs into the Scarlett Focusrite and they just worked perfectly. There was no feedback in either of the microphones. Now, of course, we did some placement stuff. We were far enough away from each other, but I expected the first few times we used those that there would be feedback on the podcast and there wasn't. So to that end, an XLR microphone is really a brilliant option if you are running a podcast, I would seriously consider it getting XLR microphones if you are running a podcast. XLR microphones do tend to feel a little bit more robust. They just feel like a really solid, solid microphone. They're normally made of like a really strong metal. However, that being said, some of the higher end USB microphones, and I do include the K658 in this because it's made of a lovely metal sheath here, and it's got this nice shock mount on it as well. Some of the USB microphones are also made of a really nice metal solid base outer coating, and that just gives it a premium feel to it. One thing that an XLR microphone will give you is you literally do get to decide exactly what audio interface you're going to use. So if you decide to buy a really cheap audio interface and then upgrade it down the line, you're not throwing the whole microphone away. You're just throwing away or selling the audio interface and upgrading that. That being said, when you've got a USB microphone, you can't do that. Basically, the whole microphone is going to go into the bin. So I've now set up the Fine Fine K658. This is it, exactly how it sounds out of the box. I've made no EQ changes whatsoever. Now, the thing to note about this microphone is you've got to be really careful that you're speaking past the microphone at a 30 degree angle and around about five inches from the microphone itself. Now, with an XLR microphone, particularly something like the Shure SM7B that's a little bit more premium, 
you can actually afford to get up really close and personal with a microphone and it will make no difference to the sound in terms of reducing the quality. Whereas with some USB microphones, particularly the lower end microphones that are USB, getting up close to the microphone just isn't really an option because the plosives and the sibilance just gets a little bit too much. I did say I'd talk through some of the USB microphone benefits and now we're using the fine fine USB microphone here. You can see it's got the beautiful RGB on the back there. It's also got a knob on here that changes the gain and there's also a touch to mute as well. I'll just demonstrate this. So the main benefit of a USB microphone is they are incredibly easy to use and the price point tends to be a little bit lower. They are literally just plug and play. You plug them in, they are detected by Windows and you can just use them straight away. Obviously you don't need any kind of third party audio interface like the Scarlett that I just showed you earlier. USB microphones do fit a wide range of budgets. You can get a very high end USB microphone and you can get a really budget microphone. Whereas with an XLR microphone, you're having to buy that extra device and they tend to start at a slightly higher price point with an XLR microphone. One thing to note about USB microphones these days as well is they sometimes can come with incredible software that helps you do some equalizer stuff, some compressor stuff, although you don't have that same physical interface that you can work with that you would get with an audio interface with the XLR microphone. What you get instead is sometimes some brilliant software that will sit on Windows and help control the quality of the microphone. One real benefit of a USB microphone that sticks it apart from the XLR microphones is that you get loads of different polar patterns that you can work with. So there's loads of different uses for a USB microphone because for example, you can go with a cardioid pattern that picks up all of the room. So you can use like a podcast with a single USB microphone or you can go with a USB microphone that is unidirectional like this one here, whereby it will only pick up from a certain direction, which is very useful if you're trying to reduce the noise from your keyboard. Saying that now, I'm also going to do a very quick keyboard test. Again, this is straight out of the box. I've not put any noise gates on this. So I do expect a little bit of pickup from my keyboard keyboard now. Now I was looking at the waveforms on OBS Studio there. It was coming in at around about minus 40 decibels. I can see that'd be very easy for me to remove with about two or three minutes of work on the filters. Now back onto the Shure SM7B XLR microphone, just to round off this video. In summary, I do really like the sound of the K658. Out of the box, it sounds really, really good, but I'm not really surprised at that now. Now, the first time I reviewed the K683A, I was incredibly impressed against another USB microphone, which was the high HyperX Quadcast. The HyperX coming in at double the price of the Fine Fine K683A. Well, this K658 from Fine Fine is about the same price as a HyperX Quadcast. However, I can tell you right now that the quality of this sound is a lot better than the HyperX Quadcast. And I know that because I've tested it and you can check the video out and I'll link it in the description below. Other stuff I quite like about this microphone, it does come with a pop filter and I do think that makes a little bit of a difference in trying to reduce some of the noise from your desk, particularly if you're not using a boom arm. However, probably the single best thing you can do for your sound quality is to just get a boom arm because they are incredibly cheap. Pick one up for $10 or $15 or a good one for 30 or 40 dollars and that makes a massive difference to the quality of your microphone i would recommend if you're going to get any usb microphone to get a boom arm i do like this gain knob here it just makes it a little bit easier to turn yourself up and down although to be honest you should be getting most of those settings right within obs studio so if you're having to use this much then you're probably not getting your settings right having a visual indicator to be able to mute is brilliant and it also supports audio monitoring with a 3.5 jack in the back i think this makes this a really nice microphone if you're going for that lower middle end budget usb microphone now you can get usb microphones that are a little bit more expensive than this but i think this offers a really really good value for money however what i would say is the k six eight three a that i reviewed previously i think sounds nearly as good as this so i think you're getting slightly more microphone for your money you're getting a shock mount and you're also getting the gain here that looks a little bit nicer and a little bit more rgb the sound out of the box is a little bit better with the 658 but i still really like the 683a but only because it's really really good out of the box at that very lower end of the market the fine fine 658 here feels like it's trying to cater for a sort of middle to high end streamer someone that wants to have almost like a centerpiece microphone as part of their setup and you'll notice as well and i'm sure this is on purpose these microphones look very much similar to each other they've obviously done some kind of modeling around the shore sm7b which let's face it isn't a bad plan because the shore sm7b is one of the most popular microphones in 
the market. Smart move from Fine Fine there. <laughs> if you want to support the channel, I'm going to link Amazon prices for all of the products that you've seen in this video. Feel free to click them, check the prices out. And if you do buy through those links, you'll be supporting the channel too. All in all, I do think Fine Fine have made a pretty good microphone here. I personally prefer XLR microphones, but it is only because I've got more complicated requirements for my audio needs. For example, the podcast. However, if you're just a bog standard streamer, just looking to have pretty good audio quality out of the box and a statement microphone, I do think the Fine Fine 658 is a brilliant option for you. So there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed the video comparing the Fine Fine K658 dynamic microphone with the dynamic Shure SM7B XLR microphone. Interesting results. I'm sure you'll agree. Have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe and also don't forget the giveaway for this microphone too. Take it easy. Bye-bye.